good morning everyone so today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, how we can use uh, vim or neo vim to do some real life dot net development uh, if you don't know what vim or neo vim is uh, you can take a look at my previous video where i talk about uh, uh, neo vim and uh, how it's a very powerful editor and it helps you move really fast and do some rapid code modifications uh, this video is primarily focused on somebody who knows what Vim or NeoVim is and uh, is uh, looking to see how we can do some serious .NET development with Vim or NeoVim. So uh, let's uh, quickly start jumping into the NeoVim configuration that is needed so that we can become productive while doing .NET development with NeoVim. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the NeoVim configuration file which is typically present in the dot config folder of my home directory and then there is a neovim folder inside it and the file is called init.vim so i'm just going to go ahead and open this file using neovim itself and we are going to look at the various plugins that we use for dotnet development and how they are helpful now uh, primarily uh, before you even get into uh, doing dotnet development with neovim it's important to understand the the plugin ecosystem that neovim has right so the first thing you need to do in order to start installing plugins is to take a look at a plugin manager you can take any one of them i have used this vim plug uh, plugin manager which is basically open source and available for free you can download it using this url and you can install it using these instructions that are given on the website right uh, and then you can follow Follow these instructions and get it installed once you have it installed in your machine uh, you will have these lines in your vim config if you follow the instructions and begin plug is where you start writing all your plugins so uh, these are the basic plugins that i have in my system uh, today some of them have to do with dotnet development and some of them don't have to do with dotnet de development they have to do with the basic look and feel feel of the neo vim installation that i have on my system but we are going to talk about a few of these that are that are concerned with dotnet development so uh, the first thing that you do is you install your plugin manager and then you can go into uh, your neovim so let's quickly jump into neovim and once you have those configuration elements in uh, like let's say you've added these lines right to add all the plugins you can come to neovim and you can do escape colon let's start neovim first and once you're inside neovim you can do escape colon plug install and then that will go ahead and install all the plugins for you for me of course these are already installed so it told me that my plugins are already installed so that's your first beginning starting point right with the uh, plugin installation now once you're done with that let's go ahead and start doing some serious dotnet development so let's go into my uh, code folder and let's just jump into a folder that i use for uh, doing youtube videos and let's create a directory called hello world example right and let's go into the hello world example directory and let's start building a dot net project here so let's say dot net new uh, console app let's start with something simple and we'll create a simple console application here and as soon as my uh, uh, my project is created i'll go ahead and do a quick dotnet build to kind of quickly build the project and see if everything is fine and now from this point on we can jump into neovim and we can start looking at the various uh, plugins that we have installed so let's take a look at the first plugin that that is there in the system which is called nerd tree which is basically like a file like explorer which allows me to navigate through various files in my system so if i jump back into my neovim uh, in fact let me go back to my configuration file so the nerd tree is a plugin that i have installed and one of the additional things that you'll notice here is i have mapped my control n key with not tree toggle command so not tree gives me a not tree toggle command which basically allows me to set the explorer on or off depending on uh, depending on uh, what i want to do so let's quickly jump back into my neovim and if i was to come here and if i was to type nerd tree toggle this would bring up this uh, uh, explorer for me and i would be able to navigate and i'll be able to open files through it now 
Interesting to note that because I have mapped it with the control N command, I can actually hit control N and the same command is fire and the tree is off. So I can keep literally hitting this and I can toggle my nerd tree on and off. That kind of allows me to hide and show the explorer on demand basically. So that's my first starting point it kind of allows me to navigate through various files. So let me quickly open this program.cs and I have this file open and then I can hit control N again and I'm done with my nerd tree. That's one way of opening the file right now let's quickly jump back to nurtry let's open the project file let's remove the nurtry back and let's say if i wanted to now jump to program.cs again one way would be to open nurtry again and i would navigate to the folder navigate to the file and open it that's that's the that's one way but a lot of us who use visual studio are actually used to this idea of searching a file and navigating directly to that file so let's see how we do that with neovim for that there is a very interesting plugin called fz F. This specific plugin that you see out here is pretty useful because that allows me to do fuzzy searches on my file name. Now just like nerd tree comes with a nerd tree toggle command, uh, the fzf plugin comes with two commands. One is called g files which opens all the files that are in your git repository and the other command is files which basically opens all the files that are there in your file system in that specific folder in which you are working. So I have mapped these two commands with control P and control F. So control P to kind of go into all git files, control F to open all files on my disk, right? So basically all the files in my disk that are checked into a git repository will be opened with control P. All the files that are there on my disk that are not yet checked into a git repository will be opened with control F. And because I don't have a git repository, let's quickly jump into my uh, project folder here. And this time let me hit control F. In the moment I hit control F, you see all these list of files open here. And uh, if you see right here, I can select program.cs and I can directly open it. So that's a quick, easy way to jump into a file. Now I can also do control F and then I can start typing program here. And you'll notice that as I type program.cs is automatically picked for me. I can open it. So that way, if I have hundreds and dozens of files in my, uh, in my folder, right? Code files, I can quickly jump into a specific file and I can start looking at it and I can start opening it without having to go through nerd tree and without having to open a specific folder, subfolder. Uh, FZF actually looks into all the folders and searches files for me. So that allows me to kind of quickly jump from one file to another when I'm doing development, right? So that's, those are the two, two plugins that are kind of important uh, for me. And the other plugin that is really important in this is the OmniSharp plugin, which is this one. And the, this one. And this is really important because this is the one that actually does a lot of syntax highlighting, code checking, and a lot of other things, right? So it allows me to do things like uh, find usages, go to definition, uh, and most importantly, uh, code actions. So those are the things which if you see, uh, there's a pattern emerging here, right? There are two things that we do with NVIM development. One is we install plugin. Each plugin gives me certain commands and then I go ahead and basically map th those commands with shortcuts in my keyboard. That way I can actually fire th those commands very easily. So that's what exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, I have got the OmniSharp uh, Vim plugin installed on my machine. And so now if I go down out here, out here, you'll be able to see the various mappings that I have done using that command, uh, that uh, plugin. So the primarily, uh, the mappings that I have done is I have done a GD uh, key mapping with go to definition. Uh, I have done FU with find usages. I have done FI with find implementations. And most importantly, I have mapped the leader space key, which is right here. If you see the leader space key, uh, this is what I have mapped with the OmniSharp get code actions command. And all of this will make sense as we go and start looking at, uh, start looking as very at various things, right? So the first thing is, uh, the go to definition command. Let's take a look at how that works. Let's jump into NVIM here and let's quickly come here and let's start creating a class called say customer. So let's create a public class customer 
now you noticed when i opened my brackets the, the other bracket got added automatically and the reason why that happened is because i have this uh, this plugin here which is basically called match always and auto pairs so match always allows me to see where my brackets begin and close and auto pair basically allows me to automatically create the ending pairs of brackets uh, that i create so these two are also pretty useful plugins you can go ahead and download them as well uh, but let's focus on for the time being let's focus on the omni sharp go to definition command so i have mapped it with the key gd which is go to definition right so let's quickly jump into my this thing and let's focus on creating uh, a customer class so let's create a property called first name and let's create a getter and a setter and let's quickly come into this thing and let's create a last name and create a getter and a setter so i have this here and now let's start creating a object of the customer class Now, one of the interesting things that you'll see here is the autocomplete that I'm getting. That's because of a plugin called COC, uh, coc.nvim, you'll see here. And there are instructions on how you can integrate COC with your uh, OmniShark. We'll come back to that, but let's focus for now on the idea of going to definition. So let's create a customer.firstname equals uh, customer and customer dot last name equals one so let's say i have a customer called customer one now at any point of time if i'm looking at this code right and i want to go to definition let me move back to the normal mode and at by hitting escape so now at any point of time if i want to go to the customer class right let's say the customer class is in some other file somewhere and i want to jump to that definition all i do is i type the key gd and notice it jumped to the customer class directly now apparently it so happens that the customer class is in this file in this code but even if it was there in a different file gd basically allows me to go to definition for a specific uh, piece of code that's the kind of thing that we get in visual studio and now with uh, neo you are also able to get that with the power of OmniSharp. So that's your go to definition, right? GD. So we went to the normal mode, we hit GD and it jumped me to the customer class. Uh, that's, that's one example. Similarly, I can do find usages, find implementations and all of that. So that's, I'm not going to go into a lot of those details, but that gives you an idea of how you can actually uh, jump. Now, the other interesting part here is code action. So notice I have mapped it to the leader space key right now leader is your uh, backward slash key on your keyboard usually with vim so i hit back backslash and space and that will give me all the other possible options that usually visual studio gives me but now i'll start getting them in vim so let's say for example i want to take this class right and i want to put it in a different file i can hit the leader space and notice it is giving me a lot of these options here uh, below right here if you notice it's giving me a lot of these options and i can take a look at various options i can scroll them and i can say okay move this type to a different file move this type to customer.cs right and i'm using uh, my keyboard to kind of pick this let's quickly say i want to move this to uh, move this type to a different file altogether and i do that and just like that my code moves out into a different file right and uh, i can do a escape colon w q w to write the file to the disk i can hit this and i can do a dot net build directly from here and that will actually build my project for me right and i can actually if i wanted to run the project i can actually do a dot net run directly from here and it will actually also run the project for me right and uh, i'm still in my development environment and let's go to the customer class right so let's go into this and let's now type go to definition and notice how it quietly jumped into the next file so this is the power of omnisharp that you get uh, inside vim where you can do things like go to definition you can do things like extracting things in a in a different file pretty much everything that visual studio allows you to do right because all the code actions that you see here are pretty similar to what you see in visual studio right now another interesting part is let's say here right if i had some extra usings uh, let's just go ahead and put a using system dot io right and let's say i'm not 
utilizing this at all notice how omnisharp is kind of highlighting this in blue now one of the additional plugins that i've used along with omnisharp to kind of highlight this in blue is called al so let's quickly go up here and let's take a look at this al plugin right here so that's the plugin that's constantly doing analysis for me and it's uh, telling me what's wrong with my code it's a sort of a linter which is uh, constantly uh, linting my files so it this plugin basically ma works along with uh, along with omnisharp and it allows me to and do some important highlighting right so there is uh, there is a bit of uh, work that i had to do to make it work with omnisharp which we'll kind of jump and cover a little bit more into details but uh, and i'll go ahead and actually publish my entire config file so if you have any questions regarding the config file you can take a look at it but the idea of this video is kind of show you how powerful it is to be developing uh, in nvim and still writing dotnet code and getting all the flexibilities and the and the convenience features that you get with visual studio or visual studio code so i'll go ahead and share my config file with you and you can take a look at the various uh, configurations that i have done to to make this work now let's quickly jump here and let's say okay this right here is extra unnecessary and it tells you at the bottom of the page what the issue is right so at any point of time if you get errors if you get problems you're told here and you remember my code actions was leader key and space and the moment i hit that you notice that i get this code action which says remove unnecessary usings so at any point of time let's assume that if i had a few more here right let's say i had using system dot configuration which was also useless right and i go ahead and save this at any point of time i had this two extra uh, usings in the system so i can uh, do leader space and then it will give me these options here and i will go ahead and say remove unnecessary usings and it will go ahead and remove all of them so that's the kind of convenience that i get with the omnisharp plugin there was a time when this for plugin wasn't very uh, very mature but what i'm noticing now is i'm doing a lot of my dotnet development in nvim and this plugin pretty much seems to work flawlessly and i can actually work on pretty large projects uh, using dotnet inside nvim without having to go into visual studio so that's pretty powerful if you are in the linux vim nvim world uh, that's pretty powerful to be able to write dotnet code in vim or neovim uh, there are also a bunch of other plugins that we want to cover which we will cover later on for example if you look at uh, these plugins they are primarily for making my uh, neovim installation beautiful right so let's quickly go up and let's take a look at this these plugins so i have my color schemes i have got uh, the airline plugin which basically creates uh, this lightweight uh, power line kind of a uh, uh, status bar for me and then i've got themes for that which decides various colors that i see there the vim specter is interesting it's a it's a full blown uh, debugger for neovim and it has support for dotnet so that's a whole another video all together uh, which basically will allow us to take a look at uh, what vim, vim specter does and how we can do debugging with uh, nvim uh, using dotnet so that's uh, the basic idea that's a quick teaser of what you can do with neovim using dotnet development as i said i'll go ahead and publish my configuration file on github so if any one of you is interested in taking a look at that file uh, all you have to do is just download it uh, install the plugin uh, install this specific uh, vim plug plugin manager then download this config file and you won't have to do any of the work all of this will be pretty much installed automatically in your machine and you should start working with uh, nvim and .NET development so if there are any questions i understand this is a pretty quick video it's just a teaser of what you can do with neovim if there are any questions please feel free to post them out on the on the comment section and i'll be more than happy to help out if you have any issues configuring this environment or getting dotnet development uh, working on your uh, vim or neovim installation so feel free to comment and ask questions uh, that's pretty much it this was a quick teaser of how you can do dotnet development using neovim thanks for watching bye